in this session we will be going through module 2 of information theory and coding subject source encoding is the module 2 let us see what do we mean by the process of source encoding we have seen in our module 1 the main block diagram in information theory and coding system the first block is the information source this generates sequence of symbols s1 s2 and so on source and the in output of the information sequence information source is given to the encoder the main function of the encoder is the output of information source is converted to r array sequence so whatever we have the sequence s1 s2 s3 of the output of this information source is converted to r array sequence that is said to be the function of that is the function of source encoder so if you have the output of the symbol as s is equal to s1 s2 and so on this is the output of information source which generates sequence of symbols this has been given this is the output of information source this is given as input to the encoder the main function of the encoder is to convert this to another sequence and that is called as r array sequence so the block that performs this conversion of output of information source to array sequence is called as source encoder. So we know input to the source encoder is the symbol sequence that is the output of information source, any symbols, letters, alphabets, all these are generated by the information source. This will be given as input to the encoder. Encoder is a block which is going to perform or it is going to assign these symbols with some other sequence that is called as r array sequence that process of converting the symbol sequence to r array sequence is called as source encoding so here what is this r array sequence let us see what do we mean by r array sequence now the output of encoder if the output of encoder if r is equal to 2 r is equal to 2 means we have only two symbols when i tell r is equal to 2 it will have only two symbols 0 and 1 such symbol is called as binary sequence so here if 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 the encoder converts the information sequence or the symbols to binary sequence that is r is equal to 2 then it is called as r array sequence is called as binary sequence if r is equal to 2 if our set of alphabets if our set of alphabets s is equal to s1 s2 and s3 for example now are converted to s1 is equal to 0 s2 is equal to 0 1 s3 is equal to 1 0 if they are assigned in this way then it is called as a binary sequence this conversion this coding this assigning of symbols to binary sequence is done by encoder that is the main function of encoder now if r is equal to 3 bits 3 bits means what for example if s1 will be assigned to 101 s2 will be assigned to 010 s3 will be assigned to 100 this will be called as ternary sequence if it is 3 bits if r is equal to 4 r is equal to 4 means s1 will be equal to 1000 s2 will be equal to 0010 such sequence will be called as quaternary sequence so here output of encoder depends on what is the r what is the value of r where r in for the sequence so if it, it will be a binary sequence if r is 2 it will be a ternary sequence if r is 3 and if r is equal to 4 it will be a quaternary sequence that means the symbols which are generated by the information source will be encoded that means they will be assigned they will be mapped to the sequence r array sequence that process is called as encoding block is called as encoder that is what this slide tells us so source alphabet that is output of information source consists of symbols s1 s2 up till sq so sp the set of alphabets set of symbols generated by the information source we have another set called as x this is called as code alphabet this consists of what x1 x2 up till xr where r is the 
number of symbols. If number of symbols is 2, binary sequence. Number of symbols is 3, ternary sequence. R is for quaternary sequence. So we define the term coding or source code encoding defined as transformation of symbols from source alphabet X to code alphabet S to code alphabet X. So here transformation of source symbols from S to X. The symbols from S assigned symbols from X is called as coding or source encoding technique. So source encoding is a process of transformation of the symbols from the source alphabet S to code alphabet X. Where S consists of symbols generated by the information source. X consists of R array symbols which are nothing but it can be 2, 3 or 4. This transformation of symbols from the information source to a code alphabet X is called as source coding or source encoding. The block that performs this is called as source encoder. Let us study some of the properties of the codes which we have seen. What are the properties or some of the types of the code? First, prop, first type of code is a block code. So, is a code which maps each symbol from source alphabet S to some finite sequence of code symbols from code alphabet X. Same definition as source encoding definition from S to X. Transformation of symbols from S set to X set. And the resulting sequence is called as coded sequence or encoded sequence. So, let us consider a source S. Source S which is having four symbols are emitted S1, S2, S3 and S4. Code alphabet consists of only two symbols. That is now here R is equal to, it has only two symbols 0 and 1. So block code, how can you construct a block code? I have told source coding is a technique in which the symbols from the S are assigned to symbols from X. So S1, S1 will be assigned now. 0 0 that is random assigning i'm telling as r is equal to 2 it is r is equal to 2 here you can see here r is equal to 2 symbol has x1 x2 up till xr x1 x2 up till xr now r is equal to 2 so here you have to assign two symbols so here now s1 will be assigned 0 0 from set x from set x s2 will be assigned 0 1 S3 is assigned 1, 0. S4 is assigned 1, 1. So this is how a block code can be constructed from X for the source symbols S. So the sequence what we have got here are called as code words. This is how you can assign given X code alphabet from the source alphabet X. We can map using the code alphabet symbols. After the block codes, let's see what is a non-singular code. A block code is said to be non-singular if and only if all code words are distinct and easily distinguishable from one another. That means they are distinct. You know none of the code words are repeating. That means if I tell S1 has 0, 0, no other symbols in this table has got 0, 0. They are distinguishable. For example, S4, S4 is equal to 1, 1. No other code for the symbols here have 1 1 so it is easily distinct and distinguishable it is e it is distinct that means they are unique there is no repetition of the code word and they are distinguishable easily you can differentiate what is the code word for symbol s1 what is the code word for symbol s3 that is what the definition for non-singular code means so i tell in table one in table one all code words all code word means these are the code words okay these are the code words all code words are non singular why are they non singular because they all are different as the code words all are different easily distinguishable and distinct they all are said to be non-singular code words that is what non-singular code word means to us next type of code word so we have block code where from symbol s to symbol x we can assign and we can generate a code word and code a we have generated 
This code A is said to be a non-singular code word if they are easily distinct and distinguishable. Next, we have uniquely decodable codes. What do we mean by uniquely decodable codes? Taking reference again for the block code, I define block code is said to be uniquely decodable code if and only if nth extension code word of the code is non-singular. What do we mean by nth extension? For example, if I want to write S1, S2, okay, I write it S1 is what? 0, 0. S2 is what? 0, 1. This extension of the code word also should be non-singular. Then only it is called as uniquely decodable code. This is what is given. S1, S2, S1, S1, four zeros. Correct? Because S1 also I had assigned 0, 0 in code A in table 1. And S2 was 0, 1. S3 was 1, 0. And S4 was 1, 1. So we'll see what is the nth extension of this. So here S1, S1 all four zeros s1 s2 0 0 0 1 next s1 s2 right s1 s3 s1 0 0 s3 1 0 s1 s4 0 0 1 1 next s2 s1 0 1 1 0 s2 s2 0 1 1 0 s2 s3 s2 is 0 1 s3 is 1 0 S2 is, S2 is 0, 1. S4 is 1, 1. So, 0, 1, 1, 1. S3 is 1, 0. S1 is 0, 1. So, in that way, 0, 0. S3 and S1. Next, S3, S2. S3 is 1, 0. S2 is 0, 1. So, here when I write, when I write such a code, here, yeah, when I write such a nth extension of the code, when I write nth extension of the code, S4 into S4, 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 1, 1. S4, S3. S4 is what? 1, 1. What is S3? 1, 0. Correct. S4, S2. 1, 1, 0, 1. Correct. So, when we write such nth extension, all these code words should be different. They should be unique. If all these code words, if the n, if a block code with its nth extension, nth extension also easily distinguishable, unique, they are all different, there should be no repetition, okay, then such code words are said to be uniquely decodable codes. So a block code is uniquely decodable code only when the nth extension code word of the code is non-singular and i tell non-singular it should be all code words should be unique distinct distinguishable all should be different that is what it means next is an instantaneous code a uniquely decodable code is said to be instantaneous if it is possible to recognize the end of any code word in any received sequence without reference to succeeding sequence. Suppose I, I receive I, 0 is transmitted, I should be easily able to decode this 0 at the receiver without waiting for the next symbol to arrive. Suppose I, I receive 1, I should be able to decode that 1 is equal to S2 very easily without waiting for next symbol to arrive. That is instantaneous code independent of one another even when zero arrives i should be able to tell it is s1 when one arrives i should be able to tell it is s2 when one zero arrives i should be able to tell it is s3 i should not wait for the next symbol to see whether easily i should be able to decode it i should not wait for the succeeding symbol i should not wait for another symbol to arrive that is called as instantaneous code now here we have four four symbols we have three codes constructed Code C, D and E. I have given a table. Now, let the received sequence, be. that means S1, S2, S3, S4 are coded by the encoder. It is transmitted and this is what is received at the receiver. Now, if I use code C for decoding, if I use code C for decoding, then what happens? As soon as I see first two zeros, if I am using code C, I write this as S1, correct? S1. 1 1 as soon as i see 1 1 i write s4 
correct like 0 0 I write as 1 so I need not wait when 0 0 is there I'm, I there is no confusion easily I'm able to write it as s1 when 1 1 comes easily I'm able to write it as s4 when again 0 0 comes easily I'm able to write it as s1 I'm not a, waiting for any symbols to arrive succeeding symbols to arrive easy decoding is possible now that means we are able to see that 0 0 arrives means easily I'm able to decode as s1 I need not wait for another code to arrive now if I use code D to decode the receive sequence now suppose in code D what is there there is only one zero so when one zero arrives I'll put it as s1 okay next zero arrives I'll put it as s1 as per this table next one one arrives when one one arrives one one arrives okay one one arrives I should write it as s3 right one one arrives I should write it as s3 next again there is one one zero you can see zero zero arrives one zero arrives one zero arrives now one one zero one one zero when one one zero arrives I write it as s3 right next another zero arrives I write it as s1 so I'm not waiting for any other symbol to arrive as I, I as I know that I can assign them easily I'm able to decode it now if code e is used for the same received sequence okay so when zero arrives I will write it as S1. Next, another 0 arrives. Another 0 arrives. So, here when another 0 arrives, I am very much doubtful because I have to wait for the next symbol to arrive because all these you can see they start with 0. Okay, so here what I will do when 1 0 arrives, I have to wait for another one to arrive so i will have two codes two codes generated two types of decoding so when one zero arrives i write it as s1 okay another zero arrives also i write it as s1 okay another way of decoding i'm telling next you have zero one one next you have zero one one zero one one is not there so next one one zero will arrive okay so when one arrives we can see here when one arrives there is no code starting from one so i have to wait for the next one so i can't decode you can see here this decoding is not possible but when zero arrives s1 zero one one arrives s3 right zero one one arrives s3 next zero zero s1 s1 that means we can see here that all code words as they start from zero if this type of code word is not possible because when zero arrives i'll put it as s1 one more zero arrives i'll put it as s1 but when one arrives i don't have any code word you can see i don't have any code word to so symbol to assign because all starts with zero so i have to wait for this one to arrive so when zero arrives i can't write it as s1 immediately because if next one is there i should wait for one more one because zero one is s2 0, 1, 1 is S3. So there are two types of coding possible. When 0 arrives, I'll put S1. When 0, 1 arrives, I will put S2. But again, there is 1, 0 remaining. And for this 1, 0, there is no code again. So you, they are able to see that this is also not able to decode. This style is also not able to decode, only this. So if such two styles, we are not able to decode. And we have to wait for the next symbol to arrive for decoding such code is not to said to be not an instantaneous code we see code c and d are instantaneous we need not wait for any symbol code word to arrive as soon as zero arrives i'm able to send s1 another zero one arrives s4 for code c and code d respectively but that is not the case in code e because when i assign zero arrives as an s1 Next is 0, 1 arrives, I write S2. But for 1, I can't assign anything because all starts with 0. I have to wait for the next symbol. So what I do, when 0 arrives, I write S1. 0, 1, 1, I write S3. Next for 1, 0, I write S1. For another 0, I write S1. So code AE is not said to be not an instantaneous code as all code words starts with 0. And we have to wait for the next symbol to arrive for 
decoding. Craft inequality. The very necessary condition for the existence of instantaneous code is given by i is equal to 1 to q r power li should be greater than or equal to 1. This is called as graph thinking and inequality. We know what is instantaneous code now. For any code to be existing as an instantaneous code, the condition is as binary symbols for binary symbol r is equal to 2. So here r will be equal to this condition is called as craft inequality condition. Or I is I is 1, 2, 3, 4 symbols. For any code, we are able to calculate code efficiency and redundancy. If L is the length of the code given, then length of the code is given by I is equal to 1 to Q probability PI into Li. Probability PI into Li, where Li will be L1, L2, L3 and so on next when we have l with uh, and we can also calculate entropy equation we know p log 1 by p over the summation i is 1 to q efficiency we have calculated in our previous unit module entropy by l and redundancy is 1 minus efficiency in the next session we will see some of the source encoding algorithms